de semente que eu mandei buscar Sai de semente do meu maracá Sai de semente que eu mandei buscar So show us some of the uh, techniques on that first instrument that you started out on, the pandero. Right, the Brazilian tamborine, the pandeiro. Huh? So yes. you get some basic strokes. Right, the first thing that was shown to me actually, okay, was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It was like one, two, three, four, okay? Okay. So let's break it down. You've got a, yeah. an open tone with a thumb. Yeah, but then the rhythm, the actual pattern that I would like to show, okay. it's, it would start with this close, which okay. means with my finger against the head, the head of the instrument right here. Okay. Right? So you dampen so that's the head. close, and you get this sound here. Okay. Okay. So it's muffled kind of. Right. Open is. So the first thing that actually you have to learn is this sound here. The open. Is, the, is this, you know, it's like a, you know, okay. you, know you, don't, you don't press, you don't press right. against the instrument, because otherwise you don't get the sound, you go, you know. Okay, throw it down. Yeah, it's just bounce, kind of, you know, bounces okay. your finger back, your, your thumb. Right. So, so that's, that's uh, the first sound. Okay. But then the pattern goes, the same, the same movement. Okay. But close, so right. it's like one, two. Okay. So it's like one, two, two is fingers. Okay. Like, and this is very important here. You bring it to you. So there's okay. very little motion really in the right hand. You bring the left hand up to. That's true. Yeah. To hit you know, the. This, this is as important or even right. more important than this hand. Right. This just goes pa pa pa, you know, it's like one, right. two. You know, it's like one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. One, two, see like. So the motion is really important to you. You throw it down and then rebound. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Right. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I could show you like this, actually. Okay. So that'd be so, a good exercise just to learn that motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we'll put it in a pattern later. Right. And then you go. One, two, three. Three is sna uh, slap, slap, right? You okay. go one, two. Oh, no, no. Three is fingers again. One, two, three. Okay? Okay. On the other side. So it's like. Okay. One, the, the fingers down there, is it open? 
No, it's a saw like this. It's okay. closed too. Okay. See, one, two, three. Okay. And still close. Four. Right. And two, then open. Two is two is open with the fingers here. Actually, it could be all closed. So, okay. One, two, three, four. Could be the four. Four is the, uh, the slap. slap. So it's like one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the first movement. Okay. Then the second movement would be the f one, one, two, three, four. First, one, open. open. One, two, three, all open. One, two, three, four. Four close. The two and three are open now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's open. That's the second movement. Now close. On four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah, so it's like. That's the difference, is that the pattern is the same, but it's one, it's closed on the first note, and the other one, it's open. Right, right. Okay, all right. The first, second, and third notes. Okay, right. of the because second Because it's part. like one, two, three, right? That's all closed. Right. One, two, three, four, all closed. Then one, two, three, four, four. closed. The first three ones is open, okay. and then closed. So okay. it's like... Question. Okay, yeah. So in sure. the first group, are they all closed? I just want to make sure we have this right. Yeah. Okay. In the second one, they're all open except for the last one, which is a slap. Which is a slap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. So then what which, comes next? Then what comes next is the. Dun, dun. Okay, it's a pick up right. kind of thing. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay. Two opens in a row. Yeah. And, you know, uh -huh. and one, and one, and one, and one. So it's like one, two, three, four. Right, that's okay. the first one okay. there. Uh -huh. It's all open. One. Okay. And then you bring the, the, the pitch up by dampening on the boom yeah. goon. Yeah. Which is like. almost like you play the surdu here and the right. counter surdu which is right. called which is you know like the rhythm you go you know that kind of stuff surdu counter surdu one one two three four one two three four one two three so it's like one two one two three oh Count 
running in two, the, the low note's going to yeah, be on two. Right. right. So that, that's okay. the essence of samba there, then. Yeah, it's true. This is like very old fashioned kind of right. stuff. And uh, that's, you know, we're talking about the basics, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, is very important to know, I think. Okay. You know, because okay. from this, you can do so many things. Like the, when I do my solo, you know, I have so many tricks. I mean, you know, like, yeah. I go like. Which is just like, you know, pressing, you know, here. Pressing here. Uh huh, uh huh. So Changing the pitch around. Like, you know, like on top of the mic, it sounds real good with, you know, big speakers for a solo thing, you know. And then, you know, right. the other thing, of course, is the... You know. And then you go, like, over here in the back, you go... Then you go, the, another thing that I do is like, you know, it's like. All right, let's go back. Show me the first one. The right hand is just doing like a roll. Yeah, just back like a roll, okay. right hand. All right. And you just change the pitch back here. Yeah, back here. But then you use more than more yeah, pressure one than just finger. One. Uh -huh. Just so you get a stronger sound. the next one? Then the next one is just, you know, it's like if you're playing a, a, you know, a hand drum, because right. that's not... A frame drum, yeah. Yeah, frame drum, right. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just right there is with your thumb here, with your left hand. That's changing the pitch. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, you know. Uh -huh. Or you could go. I just play like with these fingers because uh, I don't want to make, I don't want it to be too loud right in the beginning of the solo. That's the okay. only reason. So how'd you get that little swing out of there with the left, the left hand that comes up and Oh, yeah. Well, right. I do this because, uh, you see, I'm dealing with this here, right? Okay. When I'm going, you know, when I'm going. But then my finger, my, my thumb, it's, uh -huh. you know, I can't really press yet. Okay. So I go. Uh -huh. So I kind of that gives you some time. To yeah, I, I grab it again. <laughs> I change the position, the way I'm 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 holding the instrument. Uh -huh. I have you know like instead of being like over here, right? Then I go. So it's like a. So you I'm just, what I'm doing really, I'm just grabbing it with a little more strength. Okay. And okay. Yeah, so this way, the, my thumb goes in, in the instru into the instrument a little more okay. inside. So you kind of let it go for a second yeah. to bring it up, and, and then when I, you catch it. I let it, it go for a second. You right. dig in on it. Yeah. Okay. And I okay. catch it again. How did you start out? By just working on the different motions that were involved? Or how long did, I mean, that takes a while to get that together. Yeah, it takes uh, as long as it takes to mm -hmm. learn how to whistle, probably, you know. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, whistling, I remember uh, when I was a kid, one day I decided that I was going to learn how to whistle, man, you know. <laughs> and I, just, I spent a long time, probably over a month or two months, I don't know, I have mm -hmm. no idea, going... <sighs> <laughs> Trying to get that sound to come out. You know, and one day, all of a sudden, it just goes. 
You know, it's like, wow, I whistle. And then you want to show and nothing comes up, you know. <laughs> and you, you have to practice more. It's just yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You don't show anything to anybody before you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't just go and learn how to play, you know, on stage or, or, or in your studio or whatever. You have to practice, right. you know. I don't practice anymore because I'm lazy and, and also, you know, I'm just, I'm not a interested in uh, in being so incredibly good that I'm going to just blow everybody's mind. What I do is what I do and I learned practically on my own, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, most of the stuff that I play is, is my own little tricks and etc. you know what I mean? Yeah, would you, would you advise just to, to try improvising on it? Try to find your own sounds, just yeah, try to, you know, try to after, learn the instrument. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, and your beats, I mean, you play, are you playing funk, you know? You know, mm -hmm. like you play something like... Uh, so, then you go... Yeah. So if you don't like, if you don't spend some time just shedding on the instrument and getting to know it, you're not going to be able to come up with stuff right, like that. Right, right. Because then you look at the instrument and you all you can do is, <laughs> or, right, or you know that like, you know that kind of stuff, which is great. You know, so I like the New Orleans uh, feeling. You know, I, every time I play New Orleans, I eat a lot of lots of oysters and uh, and also. Uh, I listen to a lot of music. It's a whole different right. technique because it's my own, actually, right. to be precise. And know. dealing with the head and the tuning and the size of it and so forth, it really yeah. becomes an instrument. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You know, it's like, it's your own instrument. You see, like, I mm -hmm. don't believe that uh, you, you go to the store and you buy an instrument and you just take mm -hmm. it home and you play. You know, you have to know, you have to, to know exactly where it hurts you, hmm. you know. So you, you, you have to kind of ease, you know, there a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You always, because, you know, an instrument doesn't really, you know, it's not really like a glove, you know. It's, mm. you have to feel it, you know, you have to, it's, it's almost like you a playing. You with it. Yeah. yeah, playing a grand piano and then you go play the, you know, PX3581, you know. And then you right. go, bloop, bloop, and it's like, wow, you know, this incredible yeah. sound, right, comes out. But it's better, you know, like if I want wah, you know, I go wah, you know, that's wah. And, you know, or, or wah, you know, like shwah, shwah. Or I kind of, I, you know, I look at this, the, the, the instruments and I, I know the sound. And the reason that I, that, uh, you know, I just developed my uh, intuition, I could say, you know, uh -huh, to uh -huh. so much, is because I spend a long time with the instrument. With each instrument, You yeah. see, it's like the, the, yeah. the pandero, man. I mean, this, I used to sleep with the hmm. tambourine, you know, under my, my pillow. Hmm. And uh, so, you know, it's a very important uh, instrument to me. The uh, yeah. heart of the samba. Yeah, that's right. So there may not be that many uh, Cerdo players, at least outside of Brazil, but can you explain the, the role that the instrument plays in Brazilian music so uh, that can help translate to the drum set and for people to get the feel of samba? Yeah, well, this is what uh, 
I mean, this is, as you say, I mean, this is the root of the rhythm, of the mm -hmm. samba rhythm. And, and also the ca carnival, kind of a march, you know, that we, we play in a carnival time, which uh, is the same kind of beat, actually. Mm -hmm. But it's applied to samba and also marcha, uh, march, you know. Right. The, uh, basically, you have to use, you know, this is something that I just uh, I improvised. Uh, over here, but it's a special bitter, you know, for this. I just forgot it. Okay. So I just made one. One thing, you have to hit right on the middle of the okay. instrument. All right, dead center. Otherwise, there's no depth to it. It's just All right. instead of, you know. See? That's uh -huh. the sound uh -huh. right uh -huh. there. So. And then also you have to put your hand back and hit this part here. Okay. Of course, you can also just play. That's like the basic rhythm that, okay. uh, you know. But, but the, you the know, swing is when you go through yes, the... Yes, uh -huh. you know, that's, that's when you're a professional player and you know what you're doing okay. and you kind of, you know, spend some time with the instrument, then you can go. Uh, the first one is close. Right. Right? Right. Open would be. So it's like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's like one is close. Right. Let's say, okay, let's play a samba, all right? Okay, everybody now, okay, let's play a samba. One, two, one, two, three, four. Right. Would be the, I, you know, like the, okay. for the start, right? So the, the, the yeah. right hand is just yeah. bop, bop, yeah. and then it's in between, you're going there. Right. And the open tones, that's all coming from the left hand. Right. Okay. Now that's, I like that there's a little pickup in. Yeah, to, for the swing, right? right. Actually, you know, a nice, uh, a nice beat, like a complete cycle kind of beat would be. So it's like. Another one to go. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Kick now, what about the little turnaround that comes at the end of a phrase? Where boom, 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 boom. Yeah, well, it's for the verses and the, you know, okay. the bridge or whatever. That's just like, a kick uh, into the next. Up. Right, right. So the people they will go, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because in carnival carnival songs, most of them, it's it's one part that is very mellow, kind of, you know, and then no, that's actually on this song is the strong part is, then the the bridge is like, so everybody's okay. 
Madure la Cholo. And everybody goes, yeah, that's right. You know, so every time you, you go through that little change from, you know, between the head of the tune and the bridge or whatever, yeah. you give that push and the people, they stand up and they go for it. That's you know, great. That's, yeah, but it's, it's really just a pickup, you know, when in you ask. In the Sama school, there would be a lot of people. Is this like the lowest one? Or they actually No, they that make is the Maracanã, which is bigger. Uh-huh. Is this uh, in the middle then? Yeah, this, this is a big one, but not the biggest. Right, right. I like this size. It's kind of a medium size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, bigger is kind of too much. It's just for outdoors, you know. It just goes right. boom, that's it, you know. Right. And it's great, but... Uh, so I think we see some techniques that apply. We're starting to see some patterns here, like in the Pandero, where the open tones sit and where that falls right. and how you're muting. There's mm -hmm. a lot to it's it. It's the same kind of thing. No. What I do with the Pandero there is like, yeah, which is the same. Right. You know, it's the same. Right. You, you're right. right. Now, when we're mm -hmm. on drum set, you've got to do that with just one hand. So you, yeah. you, you've got your floor tom there, basically mm -hmm. in the same position. Yeah. And you do it with your right hand and, and with the mallet, and you dampen. How do you yeah. do that? Yeah. Actually, then I will play. I would. Oh, your play, left hand. Yeah. Right. I would play like. Uh, just give me some. Yeah. I would go. You know. This is a nice, very nice rhythm, by the way, to, to be played like this. See, it's like surdo and counter surdo. Down, ding, down, ba. See? Uh -huh. It's so basically it's the same. You would move that up to the toms. Yeah, that's why you see, like, when people they ask me specifically, how is the maracatu rhythm or the caterete rhythm, you know, or you know, how do you? What is the difference between the shoti in South Brazil and in Northeast Brazil, mm -hmm. and so on and so on? See, I never really bought any books by anybody and, and read them so I can tell them exactly what it is. Uh, uh, there are some basic rhythms, Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian Afro rhythms, mm -hmm. that they have been, you know, they've been there forever, and they are the basic rhythms for everything else that is going on on top. Mm -hmm. And then in different states of Brazil, uh, we play it differently, those rhythms, but Vari basically they are the same. Variations, yeah. yeah. Kashishi, in reality, this this is the kashishi. It's the small one. Smaller. This is a kashishi too, but it's this is uh, from Africa and this this is from Brazil. Right. You know, but let's say this is a kashishi. Shakers, let's say shakers. This is a shaker too. You know, right? right. This is from Cuba, you know, so, uh -huh. it's a little, kind of a tourist thing, but I, I like it, you know, So I the kashishi, the smaller one, is normally with the berimbau. Yeah, right? yeah, with the berimbau, which is a bow, looks right. like a bow and arrow, you know, without the arrows, of course. And it's, it's got a, a gourd that right. resonates, and one string, and it goes wow, 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 you know, it sounds, right. I'll demonstrate that later on. Somewhere, but in your right hand, is the kashishi, is, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you kind of took it away from that, and also had got some different yeah. sizes. It's true. Well, I was uh, one. I, you know, I. Uh, I don't know if I was the first one because, uh, and I didn't see the other people, but right. I was one of the first ones that uh, played the kashishi without the beating ball. Mm -hmm. See, because I wanted to play drums and and percussion at the same time, or triangle, like you know, like like maybe playing like this, you know, like you go. Yeah. 
and then you go on the bass drum, you go. You know, to get this off. That's great. Just play two things, you have two sounds at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, using different kind of shakers. You know, any shaker that I would, that, uh, that I had, that I could do that, you know, like this one here too, you know. Right. Show some of the, like, the two-handed patterns that you play. Is there uh, any particular rhythms or you just, you just improvise? Well, let's say if I'm playing, uh, you know, like Latin music, salsa or uh, Afro-Cuban mm -hmm. rhythms, so I was just in Cuba, in Cuba you know, uh, for the second time, mm. and and I jammed with the guys, you know, because they liked the way I play and everything. But I, I really, I'm always very careful about what I play with them because they're very particular about their yeah. beats, you know. Uh, you know, I, I really hope someday they just give up all that stuff and just play together, really. Mm. But, but right now, you know, they're very, you know, everybody's just so particular about their beats, you yeah. know, and so when they go. The uh, 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 uh. you know you go dun, uh, oh. dun, 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 right? right so you go the clave right right if you play the clave I like to play the clave on this like or Or, or you you can play even six eight. Mm -hmm. Ah. This is a, a, a beat that I could play with them without, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, without getting those Doesn't looks, you know, like, oh, right. Hirto, what are you doing, man? You know, you're ruining our stuff. Right. So that was a good thing, time. you know, for me. It's a good thing for people to, to, to learn, actually. It's a nice yeah. coordination thing, yeah. Yeah, then so the other safe. thing is, is, is for solos. This is good for solo also. Right. And uh, I use my voice also to go... You know, like, I think people that should use whatever they can, you know, like if you can beat something else with your foot, just go ahead and do it. Because it's more sounds that you get and it's more. You know, it's like you open up, mm -hmm. you know, more, and uh, it's it's you know to use your voice. I think is very important too. You know, time yeah, to time. But that's the main now, do you technique here. Do you yeah. alter them by putting different things inside and changing? Yeah, them? you know, you know, also is that. Yeah. 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 You know, it's this movement here too. Mm -hmm. Some people they wow. really can play this thing really. Wow, that's good. So uh, you know, or oh, yeah. or see like uh, mm -hmm. the this one. You know, I, I always like to have the the uh, the higher one in my my yeah. right hand. And then right. the lower one here is like ching 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 ah 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 eh eh ah ah bang bang oh 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 bang <laughs> That's great. So you have less uh, 
What do you, what do you have in each of these? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a little seed. It's a black and, a, and red seed from Brazil. It's called uh, mulungu. But you can put little pebbles also, you know, uh -huh, like the pebbles uh -huh. are nice. Uh -huh. I, I wouldn't put beans on it because beans, they break. You know, corn, it's okay. I mean, like uh, popcorn is okay. But then you get that more fine kind of sound tss, instead of cha. You know, this is more like, this is my loud ones, you know, it's like. Right? Because I play live a lot, you know, and right. this one is the other one. You know, this one has got corn in it, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So you just put more of it in there to create the bass, the lower bass? No, pace? it's the sound of the instrument, you see. Oh, okay. It's more of the instrument. Yeah, it's just... And also what I do, I paint this with glue. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the white kind of glue? Mm -hmm. I get a, a, a brush and I paint the instruments with glue. So they are solid, you know, you can, you can really, you know, look at this. They're solid, you don't break them, right. you know. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, they just fall apart, you know, after, mm -hmm. after a month or two months, they're just, mm -hmm. they're gone. Mm -hmm. So what I do, you know, and then if I close this a little more, if I paint a little more, this one, it gets more, I get more lows out of it also, because it closes more, you know, it's like, you know, sound is like that, right? It's like air, it's like, it's close, you know, the sound mm. gets, like, you know, like uh, lower, you know, register. And then you go whoosh. So this one is more open, as you can mm -hmm, see, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is more close. Show me the tambourine. Oh, the, okay. Not the pandero, right? The tambourine. No. Okay, tambourine uh, is a small drum. And it's used... Uh, Mainly, actually, uh, in uh, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, in to samba for samba, for mm -hmm. yeah, in samba schools. And uh, there is two ways to play: it's the right way and the way I play. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, yeah, I, I don't. I never really learned the right way, which is, it's pretty much like. So how yeah. different is that from the from the Pandero strokes, except that you're using a stick? Is it is it that different? Well, would be the Pandero would be. You see, it's got this movement, right? The anyways. turns, and also this one here, you know, with the finger here. Right. So uh, you would get. So it's no. like three, how many open? Three down, three open. Right. No, two. Two first. One, two, one. Close. Okay, close. One, two. So the first, the first two are open. Then the third one is closed. Okay, with a turn. Uh, with a turn, and mm -hmm. then three open. Okay. Okay, so it's like... Like so some some guys, they just play it up here. They go, you know. Right, it's like right. I can't do that really. So yeah. I uh, have my own trick. That uh, I get any kind of coin, like this one is a quarter, All right. and uh, and a tape, the magic uh, magic tape, magic tape, rock and roll tape, and I just tape the quarter here to my uh, to my finger. Uh -huh. So I can get this sound here, okay? So then so I rest just go flat. So then I go. So then you go one, two, three, four. So that you, can, you know, you can vary different kinds of rhythms uh -huh. in this, you know, depends what you're playing, 
what kind of song you're playing. And you don't have to keep a straight pattern going with the right hand because no, that no, breaks you it don't. up. You don't. You just you, you. I vary a lot. Actually, in Brazil, it would be very hard to somebody to uh, to really put a video together or a book saying, okay, these are the Brazilian yeah. rhythms, because in Brazil, from one sometimes uh, like in Rio, they have different samba schools, right? Right. But uh, they all play different from each other. It's uh, you know at least. Mm -hmm. 40 or 50, I mean, probably much, much more. But, uh, and they all have their own mm -hmm. style, their own mm -hmm. samba, different kind of samba and marcha that they play, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, marcha is like a marching kind of thing. Is that based on yeah. different neighborhoods or? or yeah, just yeah, it's mm -hmm. based on different neighborhoods. And, and, uh, and they know, you know, who is coming. They don't have to see if they hear the, the, the talk is of the Scuola de Samba, right. how they, they, uh, they sound, they go, oh yeah, that's Portela, or, right. you know, or uh, they, they know everything, you know, they know of each other. Right. So right. just, just by, by the, the sound, like from far away. Mm, mm. So, uh, so I'm just showing you a practical way that I found out instead of just, uh, you right. know, uh, uh, practicing a lot, an instrument that I didn't grow up with, you know. Right. Because right. this is from Rio, I'm from South Brazil, you know, it's like a, uh -huh. it's a whole different ball game. And so I just do it like this. You know, of course, you know, uh, a professional tamborin player, he will look at this video and say, oh man, look at the guy, how jive can he be, you know, playing like this? Because the, the guys, they just, they are ridiculous. They play real, real good and real fast and clean. Right. But that's all they do. Right. They can't, you know, most of them, they can't play cuica or, uh -huh. or pandero or, or a good ganza shaker, a good uh -huh. shaker. They, they, are not, they cannot play that. They don't play that good. But they play one yeah. thing real, real good. Mm -hmm. Can you show us some cuica techniques? Again, the way I play the cuica is not right. But it's the uh, most practical way to, in uh, the way that I could get a better sound, uh, especially because I don't, I don't wear a strap. Uh, a real cuica player, <laughs> you know, wears a strap, and this, you know, the cuica is strapped here. And plus, this one is a little cheap one uh, that somebody just brought me you know, from Brazil. But, and then when you have the strap, you have it like this already. So you use your hand. Uh, up here and with this finger here mm -hmm. and uh, actually with two fingers sometimes these two here you press as close to the center as you can without touching the center okay. the actual center right. because inside that is a bamboo stick right. and if you touch the bamboo it won't vibrate okay it won't go you know what i mean so the bamboo goes through the head See? So right, if you uh -huh. touch the bamboo, the bamboo goes through the head and is yeah. attached to the, right. uh, you know, right on the okay. center. So, so then you play like this. That's the right way, right? Like this. Real close, almost touching it. Yeah. yeah. Now I play like this with my thumb because I don't wear the strap, so I have to hold it, right. hold the instrument. I just pick it up, boom, and I'm ready to play. And with my thumb, I can get uh -huh. the sound. And uh -huh. then inside, I think you can get it from this side here. Uh -huh. You you know, this is a wet cloth that you don't press too much. You don't have to right. press too much, but you press that against the just, bamboo and thing. And just get you know. enough friction going. Yeah, enough friction going, so it just goes, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And then you control the sound in front of the instrument right here. Okay. When you press, it goes up. Uh -huh. Right. So you're going You know, whatever. <laughs> so that's it for the cuica. So it's all yeah. a, a pulling motion with the right yeah, hand. Yeah, well, it's a pulling and pushing also. <laughs> see? Okay.
So it takes a while just to get used to just the right hand. Yeah, the main thing is not to press too much because then, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really vibrate. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you might just pull the stick off the right. instrument or break, you know, because that breaks very easy as bamboo. Right. Is that so a, you have to like a calf head on there of some sort? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a calf head. Okay. Now that's a, a, a smaller size, right? I yeah. Mean, there's, there's much larger than that. This that's is like typically a, uh, what you use with yeah. your setup. Well, uh, I play the cuica just in special occasions, really, because if it requires, because when you play the cuica, you can't play anything else. Mm -hmm. See, you use both hands, both hands uh -huh. and then the only sound you can get is this, you know. Uh -huh. So you don't really need this sound that much, right. unless if you play with a band that, is, that you're not playing the rhythm for them, right. then you can just go over your stuff and play all kinds of right. things. Then you can play the quick, uh, easy, I mean, if they let you. <laughs> right. So, you know, because this sound, you know, you can't, you don't play this kind of sound everywhere, you know. Right. You so have to, to have a reason for it. Is know? this another uh, example where it's a it can be a very specialized instrument, where you've got solo Cuica people that might get called for, you know, recording oh, yeah, sessions yeah. and so forth? They play songs, man. Cuica mm -hmm. players in Brazil, I mean, some of the guys, they play so, like entire songs on this. Mm. You know, of course, they, they make their own cuicas. They prepare them for like, right. you know, months and months. And, and they, you know, they, they put some oil on it. I think it's uh, palm oil, red palm oil. Uh -huh. On the That's head? what I heard, yeah. I don't know because I've never seen it. But, I, you know, right. I heard that the guys, they do that right. to get a better sound and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just played for the sound. And uh, I don't play any songs. Let's move on to the triangle. That's a predominant instrument in the uh, style of Bayon. Right. And is that kind of where it originated, or do you just find it a lot in that music? Or? You find it a lot in that music. It's one of the uh, basic instruments in that kind of rhythm, like mm -hmm. uh, Chachado and Bayon, right. which uh, they're, you know, of course, is. Uh, Two basic strokes, open and close, right? And then close. Right. So usually, okay. You always hold it rather than people. They it. hold the triangle like this on their on their toe, uh -huh. you know, and they control here, or they hold over their fingers uh -huh. like this. It's more common. Uh -huh. But then you don't get a good sound. The ring. So what I do, I get a little, you know, a piece of string or whatever. Okay. This is, I, I got from my luggage, you know, from my... <laughs> the luggage you, tag? Yeah, they give you this at the airport. Which is, so it's got some elastic in yeah. there. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be that. Okay. So what happens is, see, I make a, a little ring and I put the ring on my toe. See. So then you get a free sound. Right. Right. So then you can go. Also, you don't hold this too hard. You kind uh -huh. of lose, you know. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you get. Nah. So you kind of go, you know. Uh huh. Okay, and, and the rhythm goes just back and forth like yeah, sixteenth so like, notes between. Yeah. Right. Or you can go one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Should be. Or you can go like one, two, three, four, open. So you can now start that, with open or close. You okay, know now I mean? those patterns would be for contemporary music, let's call it, or something. The Bayon pattern, mm -hmm. it's got an open tone with like where your first bass drum beat would be, and then it's open also on where the next one is. Boom, to boom, boom, yeah. boom, to oh. open, open. Can you play it again? It's like 
one, open. See, like you kind mm -hmm. of, you almost like just go like you don't go, you know, right. because if you stiff your hand immediately, you get tired. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So instead of going, what, what, you know, what, 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 you just go, da, 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 da. So like, ah, 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 ah. Instead of, da, 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 what about some of for some of the you know pop dates and stuff that you've done? Oh, it's recording like sessions. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you carry different sizes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I carry different sizes because uh, depends the the uh, the kind of music and also right. the different sizes of uh, bitters. I mean this. This one is gigantic, you know. It's real loud, you know. Right, I, right. I have to play this far from. Uh huh. Uh huh. See, this is more like. You see, it's much warmer because right, right. it's a yellow metal. It's kind of, you know, huh. it's a, how do you call this metal? Man? I'm not sure. Well, it's like brass, or uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. it's like soft metal. Is it like a door pin? What is that? Yeah, this is uh -huh. a door pin. Uh huh. Actually, uh, Florida bought the thing in Japan. It's uh, that I, you know, this is part of this little door that huh. I stole it from her. So, you know. <laughs> it's got yeah, a what, great what ab sound, though. What about the triangle? That's got a unique. Uh... Well, this this is uh, iron that they use for construction. Huh. Okay, see all the grooves here. Right, right. So uh, that's Indeed. that's made of that, but it's got a beautiful sound. It's a great sound. Uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's strong, I mean, it's loud enough to cut through, you know, right. most of, you know, even if everybody's playing, it just, you can get a, a nice, hard, right. you know, bitter, and you go, I mean, this cuts mm -hmm. through real mm -hmm. good. So with your band, you're just using that size? Yeah, yeah. And you just change the, the right size now. of the beater to... Yeah, right now, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you record, when somebody asks you to record, and uh, you know that there's some triangle there, then you know I, I take like four or five triangles. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Ayrto, can you take us on a tour of your table? Well, you see, the uh, the conception is uh, when you pick something up, let's say this, the shaker, right, and you play the shaker. And then you pick another shaker up and you go, right? So it, it's nothing else you can play because your hands are taken, both right. hands. So I wanted to play more sounds always, right? So what I, what I did actually is to set up almost like a drum set, okay? And then I can play with sticks. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the first thing, when I was playing with Miles Davis actually uh, on the 70s, uh, I was just putting my instruments in the floor, okay? Mm. And I would sit on the chair and pick them up and play. And which, you know, worked out well with that band. But then if you're playing also uh, the, the, the groove, okay? Right, right. You, you know, how can you keep the groove and play all the colors and everything? It's, it's kind of hard. So then I adopted a, a table, a small table. And uh, then the second thing, uh, Peter Engelhardt, which is a friend of mine, that uh, he makes all this stuff here. He's a uh, metal sculptor and uh, instrument maker. Mm -hmm. So Peter built uh, a table for me, for, for me, like a special table, a, a right. nice. It was not even this one; it was an old, older one. And I put a bass drum under it, you uh -huh. know. So it was like I had the bass drum finally, and then I could hit all these things. And little by little, I, I set up, it's almost like a small drum set here. See, because over here I have the, uh, <coughs> the cymbals, let's say. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
even though it's a much funkier sound. <laughs> Now that's something single. that that Peter made. Yeah, this he made a long time ago. Actually, this was, if not his first instrument, it was one of the very first ones. Really. And uh, actually, he just came to see me in Berkeley another day, and he was like, "Oh, you still have that, you know?" <laughs> so, uh, it was something. I he... like this because it's got a good sound, and it's you know pretty funky, right. natural, even though it's metal, and I can hit this. You know, like real hard and yeah. never breaks. Uh -huh. So you know, I can really, you know, take big, good blows on this. Now, what's and, the uh, what's the pad on top of that? Well, that's for my uh, special things here. I have these mm -hmm. two uh, brushes here, mm -hmm. which you know, this one. Let's say you have this sound. It's more metallic, right? Right. Then you want a more natural kind of sound. Mm -hmm. You have this. So then it's like, this is almost like Tom Toms. See? Mm -hmm. Like uh, I did a tour with uh, the Crusaders. I mean, I did many tours with them. Right. The Jazz Crusaders or the Crusaders, whatever. Mm -hmm. And one of the main rhythms that I was playing with them, it was like, uh, I'm going to use the bass drum too, and then just you will hear the sound. Okay. It's like, uh, uh, So I, I am actually using this as a cymbal or, yeah. or a hi-hat, hi -hat, yeah. and this as tom-toms, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. That's a tom-toms too. And this is like some, some effect, some crazy kind of cymbal. Mm -hmm. So you know, you go. The main axe really is this one here Snap. and the bass drum. And all those you can get from sitting down. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I sit down, I'm, I can reach, you know, everything here, you know. You know, like a. You know, and I can play this. I can even reach as far as here and here. And you, See? you also write on these are also Peter's. Yeah, I write on this. You write too. on the strings. Yeah. And, uh, and then I can pick something up like this, you know, and just go. Those are different patterns, you know. Yeah. Or something like this, you know, go. Many things you can do, you know. At the same time, you know, you play rhythm, you know. And then, uh, you put it down, you know. I never put these things down like this. Actually, I put it down much more gently, you know, like gentle, like this. Plan, so you don't make too much noise when you put things down. Right. And I kind of, what I do, I keep an eye on everything that I that is on the table. I know exactly where they are. Right. So, you know, if I need a sound right away, I just go, yeah, boom. Right. And I have that sound, you know. Do you keep your, your metals together and your woods together? Or, uh, or actually, it, it happened kind of naturally. Mm -hmm. They are kind of together, but uh, I don't try to do that, you know, right. separate metal, metal. I play, uh, let's say, as a sound, yes, but not the instruments. I, you right. know, I don't have to keep all the metal in one place. Okay. 
but uh, but you're right. You know, it's kind of they're concentrated okay. right here. Now, the the one thing that I've noticed uh, when we were setting up yesterday, you've got all these things on tape. Ah. There's tape underneath. That's the key to uh, letting them vibrate and sound, and also keeps them in place from. Yeah, it's true. Around. I mean, listen to this cowbell here. Uh. It's a full, right. nice, full sound, right? Now, okay, you take this and you put it down. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. This is what you get, and this is what you get. It's like it's a huge difference. Right. So what I do, I put one tape over here. Forget about Velcro; doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about Vel Velcro, but uh, you know, I tried everything really. Uh, and you put, you know, not a little ball, you know, with the tape. Right. You put it over here. Don't put it in the center because then you take the sound out of the instrument. So yeah. you put it over here, one here, and one right here and you keep this yeah. area open for right. resonance. And then the instrument is in the air, you see? That's great. It's right, uh, it's suspended. That works kind better of. for you than having the things mounted and... Yeah, yeah, I don't, I that. don't, I don't know. I like funky things because mm -hmm. it's no complication. Right. You know, if the tape comes off, you make another ball and <laughs> boom, and that's it. Right. And then if the mouth, you know, breaks, <laughs> then you have to call somebody, you know. Right. <laughs> and it's no good, you know, you have to be able to fix your own things, otherwise you, you know, it's just, you need a technician 24 right. hours a day to take right. care of your stuff. You've got them taped up too on the mouth here, right? There's a little oh. pad inside this yeah, one Yeah, yeah, so they don't ring too much. Uh -huh. They don't go bang, bang, you know, like this one here. See? The right. difference. Because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. open, that's, that's really to be like this, you know, it's like, you know, but this I don't want them to. I I want this to sound almost like drums, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. round. Plus, I you know I play with uh, most most of the time I play with uh, mallets, yeah. hard mallets and soft mallets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this looks like something else. But. So, anyways, then I have uh, other things here. I have uh, you know my little toys here, Japanese toys, you know. You can play any, anything you want. Uh, tak 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 you can go. As an effect, or you can play rhythm. And when so, you're playing uh, live or, and also in the studio, do you mm -hmm. mic in stereo and then play yeah, things? Actually, yeah, actually, yeah, it's just the way it is now. You know, it's one mic. Actually, I put the mic right here, so I get more of this and less of this, because that's too loud. So I, I try to keep the microphone away from the loud mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this one is okay like this, because it will pick up. And this too. Okay, right. This is pretty loud, actually. And uh, so the mics are just like that. And I, you know, this one here, when they have enough microphones, then I use one in the middle just for my right you know my main acts here okay. and and then you know i have other things to just make sounds like nature sounds right you know like a free thing you know, hey! I have no, uh, yeah, really, what could I say? Uh, I have no rules in my right, plane, right, really. Right. You know, I just hit things with things. That's what I do. And, and I get sounds, you know, mainly. Then, you know, you go, ah, you, you go on the sound here, and then you reach for that. Then you go, ah. And then you have the, you know, the, 
nature sounds going on. And then I got my bird calls, and I go, yeah, that's right. You know, here they are, you know. Yellow Mateo, whoa! Ahora, eh, cuidado, mis amigos. Cero Mateo, eh, oh. And you kind of project. You see, you don't just blow the whistle. You are a bird. When you play this thing, you have to imagine that, you know, the sky, you know, even if it's, you know, you are underground on this club or whatever. If you don't get in touch with the nature when you play nature, then you don't get that to the people. You see, the people, they don't understand that you're going to be just like, uh, you know, some, some guy that never been in the woods and going, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, birds, they don't go like that, okay. you know? And then you pick up something like this, you don't go, you know, you kind of go, you know what I mean? You are a bird when you do these things. You know, and you go. You know, so then you go, blah, 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 blah. You, then you go to metal, you know. Put this now, yeah. Then I, uh, then I have this, this thing here that goes. <laughs> I have these double things here. Nice. They, I don't even know how they call, but you know, I buy them in Germany. They're great. It sounds almost like birds flying away or something. You know, like. So, you know, this, these are all like nature. I call them nature sounds. I used to take long walks. I mean, like five, six hours walk in, you know, in the, uh, not in the rainforests, but, uh, you know, in the woods. Right. Pretty heavy woods, actually. And uh, we used to find caves and all kinds of stuff. And I was always in tune with the sounds of nature. That's why I have all these bird calls and, you know, and this stuff here and this. I make uh, things out of nothing, which, you know, this looks like a mouse trap. But in reality, you know, that's the way it works, you know. So, you know, you get something like this, you know, together with... Uh, you know, a bird call like this, you know, like. You know, it's, it, uh, the wooden sounds and, and, uh, and the bird calls and everything. It becomes totally different. It's yeah, totally it's different. all of a sudden you take the people out of the city reality, out mm -hmm. of the place, you know, they're sitting, they're watching you play, and if you transport yourself mentally to the places where you're playing, you rep you you almost like representing nature when you're playing that. Huh, huh. So then you you take the people with you. They just you know they they love it, man. You know they get amazed with this stuff. Huh. And uh, you know I have other things here. You know like this. You know. And I have things like you know this is from an old refrigerator actually. <laughs> you know and this I don't know yet what I'm gonna do with this. This was a vase that they gave me in Japan uh, right now when I, I was playing there, you know, so far. But I'm going to make some, you know, a heckle heckle out of here, a guiro or whatever. Uh -huh. And maybe a shaker, you know, who knows? It's uh -huh. just, uh, that's, uh, you have to have imagination yeah, you for have everything, actually, in life, you know. Right, and imagination without the experiences uh, is not going to cut it. It's not just a matter of just practicing these things. It's also experiencing them. Yeah, I mean, out. you have to live with your instrument, you see. Mm -hmm. These days, is not music. It's show business. It's mm -hmm. music business. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole new thing that the new generation of musicians, uh, they learn, actually, that if they know how to deal with some computers and business, you know, it's like, okay, they can program some drum machines and things like that. And they also, they can sample some great sounds like this one, you know, or whatever, right? Mm. 
if they can sample this and they can put inside of a, a, a cold metal machine mm -hmm. and press the button and they hear this, you know, so they think, okay, now all I have to do now is to get a lawyer and, and a manager and everything <laughs> will be okay. You see, that's not the way it goes. You have to have love for music. You have to have respect for music. You have to, you have to live. That's your life, man. You have to leave that stuff, you know. Otherwise, you're not a complete musician. That's, that's uh, my, my way to see it. Even though you, you could be a very rich man in five years, but uh, you won't be happy. Back to the basics. All right, so if you're playing off beats, the yeah. second note of the bass drum phrase is an off beat, so they'll be together. Right. But yeah. good, 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 good. No matter what I play up, you know, like, I always, always I go back to, because that's, you know, is to reinforce the that's, bass. It's mm -hmm. like reaffirm that, the, that uh, you know, the beat is there, the groove is there, it's set. Mm -hmm. 